This is Twit. Tech Break on the Twit Network is brought to you by ACI Learning. IT Pro, formerly IT Pro TV, joins ACI Learning's audit, cyber, and IT learning solutions. Now combining the power of MIS Training Institute and LeaderQuest, IT Pro, alongside ACI Learning, delivers lifetime learning to 250,000 plus professionals across six continents. Visit acilearning.com and learn how ACI can level up your IT team. Uh, one of the many imprints of this modern AI spectacle that we're, you know, consumed by right now is a future that may be dotted with replica voices, right? Voices that sound like someone but aren't actually them. What happens when a computer uh, or an algorithm, an AI, can actually imitate the voice of someone without their permission? Because you imagine, like, you know, some people might give that permission, other people not so much and it doesn't take much to do this uh, to use this technology so it's it's uh it's creating some interesting uh problems along the way joining us to talk about this is joseph cox who wrote about this uh in a few stories for vice welcome back joseph thank you for having me back absolutely always a pleasure to get you on and you've upgraded your system your voice is crisper and clearer than it's ever been so it's great to have you here <laughs> exactly. uh, let's Let's uh, start with last week because the stories that were, you know, you wrote a couple of stories about this. It kind of began last week, or at least that's, you know, when some of this news that we're talking about today started. And then we got some uh, more news to follow up on for this week. So last week you wrote about 11 labs. Uh, this is a company that's been working very hard on this replica uh, voice technology, this AI system to uh, replicate uh, the voices. Anyone who's watching or listening to this show in podcast form will notice that the tease today was me ran through 11 Labs system. So you can use your own judgment as far as how good or how not so good it is. But anyways, so people are getting into trouble with this. Uh, tell us a little bit about the company itself, the technology that the company has created, how much, and also I'm really curious about this, how much audio is really even needed to create a replica using their uh, system? Yeah, sure. So Eleven Labs is one of these many, many companies in what I would call the audio generation space, I guess, for lack of a better way of putting it, right? Uh, yeah. And you, you have lo lots of these different companies basically all doing the same thing, right? Where you either record audio or you upload audio. Uh, I've tested several of them, and it can range anywhere from, you know, five to 10 minutes of audio, uh, up to 60 minutes of audio. Of course, the more audio you provide, presumably the better quality voice uh, you're going to get. One I tried was I had to read, I think, a minimum of 50 lines that the site gave me, just a, a script that they've generated. Uh, and that was relatively quick, you know, and it wasn't the yeah. best voice in the world, but I could have kept going as well. Where Eleven Labs is a little bit different is that the barrier for entry is so low. They had this beta program uh, a couple of weeks ago now, uh, across a weekend, and you could basically just sign up and start generating voices. I can't remember if it was cheap or entirely free, but it was exceptionally easy to do this, you know, and that's... Yeah sort of the main thing they're offering, whereas, and it's similar with visual deep fakes, you know, where people are superimposing faces on, on, onto other people. That started as a very technical process where you had to use open source software and download it and run it yourself, blah, blah, blah. That's how audio started. And now companies like Eleven Labs basically do all, that, all of that work for you. And that's where they sit in this industry at the moment. And opens it up to really anyone that wants to use it, at least in its current beta form, which is uh, democratizing. And, you know, it, it kind of comes with the the good and the bad, right? The good is everyone has access. Everyone should, you know, someone shouldn't be uh, just uh, reduced or, or prevented from using a service, uh, you know, something like this that's, that has the potential to have such a wide impact. But there is the other side that uh, people end up using this for not so good reasons. 4chan members, as one example, apparently use the system to uh, create unauthorized and in many ways abusive material talk a little bit about what they created and it really didn't take them long of course they're what you know some people are just waiting for the opportunity to to light the world on fire but uh what did they create uh and what is the response by the actual humans that were being replicated if at all 
Yeah, so, I mean, as expected, 4chan took... Uh, it seems like it was 11 labs just because 4chan was also talking about 11 labs while sharing these clips, you know, so that's Got how it. we brought the link between the company and, and, and 4chan. Uh, but the clips themselves were a wide mix of a voice that sounded like Emma Watson reading Mein Kampf. Uh, there was some Joe Rogan stuff in there, some Ben Shapiro as well. I think there was a Rick and Morty one about domestic violence. So, you know, the real spectrum of bad to horrific stuff, you know, transphobic, homophobic, violent, whatever you want. It was being created and shared uh, by these 4chan members. As it come, when it comes to the reaction of the people replicated, I haven't heard anything from uh, particular celebrities, you know, like Emma Watson or Joe Rogan or anyone like that. Yeah, but we're continuing to look at how this technology may be used to target, you know, more ordinary people because that is what is going to happen when the barrier of entry is so low. It's like, you know, you could end up being a target of harassment or, or whoever. It doesn't necessarily have to be celebrities, you know, so that's sort of what we're looking at next. Yeah, and that makes a lot of sense, right? Like, this is just one one angle one aspect of how these services you know can be applied or how ai can be applied to creating something that didn't exist before audio and you know voice being one example there's music there's there's art and in all of these cases we're kind of we're kind of recognizing the impacts of these things you know deep fakes you know what was it a, not not very long ago there were there were people that were putting you know uh someone's face into like pornographic material and creating deep fake pornography uh and of course the person that's that's this you know being placed into these situations did not give uh permission to do so now this is happening with our voice do do companies like this and actually, I should focus this on companies like Eleven Labs, because that's what this whole story is about. Do they have like, is there any way that they can control those kinds of things? I guess in the in the realm of like pornographic material, AI systems can recognize at this point if something has a high likelihood of being pornographic. But what about, you know, unauthorized voices like that's that seems like a, a lot harder to crack down on. Yeah, so I don't know if Eleven Labs has put this measure in, but I did try another audio generation company where they had a sort of interesting mechanism where after you've read your script or uploaded your audio or whatever, it came up with a message where you had to say, hi, yes, I am Joseph Cox. I authorize this company to produce a replica of my voice. So the person whose voice you're generating has to have said that. Now, obviously, if you're ah. recording your own voice, that's not an issue because you just say it. Not everybody's going to have a recording of Emma Watson lying around mm. saying exactly mm. those words, right? So yeah, there are yeah. some sort of technical mechanisms in place. Obviously, I'm sure you could trick it or work around sure. it somehow, but there's something there. And then 11 Labs, when this misuse was being identified they came out and they sort of more asked twitter like hey what should we do do you think maybe we should ask for a full identification check maybe we could do payment authorization so you know you can only generate a voice if you've signed up with a credit card something like that i imagine that would be quite effective at stopping a lot of mm. the trolls you know one service i tried i had to pay or rather I had to subscribe to a $30 a month subscription model. And, you know, maybe not all the trolls are going to want to spend 30 bucks on whatever right. they're doing. Some will, but like not all of them. So there are measures in place. And then you bring up, you know, whether artificial intelligence could detect certain imagery. Uh, I mean, yes, uh, absolutely. For audio, I, I guess so. But then you're going to almost get into the question of, well, is this audio being generated for acting, which of course we're going right. to a story that we'll speak to in a minute. And the use case can of course bring in irony, satire, acting. It just sounds like it could get very complicated very quickly, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No question. Uh, there, there are no easy solutions for these things. And it feels like we're right in the middle of the, uh, you know, of the, this AI explosion. So these things undoubtedly, you know, it's going to take time to figure these things out and get it to a point uh, to where everybody feels respected and uh, and you, know, you can trust these systems to do good. But um, but I guess the reality is there's probably no such thing as totally and completely uh, free and clear of people, you know, using these things for harm. But uh, you mentioned it this week. 
uh, you wrote about how many voice actors are actually being asked to um, allow or sign away, I guess, their rights to their voices for these AI systems. What um, the actor, because you spoke, you and your team spoke to a number of actors about, uh, you know, for this story. What did they mm -hmm. say about how these deals are structured? Like what, what, what are they asking for? Uh, it varies, but generally the response I got was that, first of all, the sort of clauses in contracts which bring up synthetic voices or that sort of thing, they don't usually say artificial intelligence, they say likeness, synthetic, replication, uh -huh. that sort of thing. Um, so they're getting more and more prevalent. And, you know, one advocacy organization said they're very prevalent at this point. Uh, the general feedback I got from the actors was that, well, they don't want to have to do this. You know, they want to have the option to be like, well, no, I'll just come in and do my job as a voice actor. I would like to be able to do that work without also signing away my rights to you so that you can then go generate something of artificial intelligence. And, you know, there are lots of different reasons why a voice actor wouldn't want that. But one that, stuck, uh, that really stood out to me was that if you're a voice actor, you're in a booth, you're doing your session, uh, maybe a line comes up in the script that you don't like, you don't agree with, and you, like, you just, you're not comfortable performing it. You can very easily, well, hopefully very easily, depending on the power dynamic, you can say, I don't want to, I don't want to read that line. And ordinarily, that would be the end of it because you are not going to provide consent. You're not going to read out uh, the line and give them the audio. Of course, if the producer, the director, whoever, now has the rights to your voice to go make an, an AI version, well, you don't need to read the line. I'll just go make it if, you, if you're not agreeable to this. So that idea of consent, the jo the, that really, really jumped out to me when I was speaking to these voice actors. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, an actor saying, you know, that is just something that I'm not willing to say, that I would never say. And then with these rights signed away, it happens anyways. Now, sure, it wasn't them saying it, but that's kind of <laughs> that misses the point when it's your voice and, you know, every everything is open to interpretation. Um, I think those those subtleties get lost when you're talking about millions of people hearing that particular voice saying that particular thing. I could get into a lot of problem. Did you speak with any uh, did you and your team speak with any um, artists or actors uh, who are offering voices who actually welcome this technology? Because, I mean, on one hand, I, I totally understand where they're coming from. On the other hand, I'm like, yeah, but there's also the potential of opportunity there. Like I, as a voice actor, can not can only do so much if I can lend my voice to a project without doing it myself. You know, that might be time I don't have, but money I can make on another project. Were there any that, that said, hey, this is actually pretty cool? Yeah, so I reached out to Eleven Labs to ask them, look, have you spoken to any voice actors and, and that sort of thing? Have you consulted with any? And they uh, sent me a quote from a voice actor called Lance Blair. I then reached out to Lance Blair myself, obviously, to verify what they said and, and chatted to them independently. But he shared the concerns of his colleagues across the industry, but he also saw the benefit in this technology that he could be maybe be able to use it to supplement his income or, or use it in different ways and that sort of thing. So look, there are people who could use it. I would say that he worked, at least judging by his portfolio, more on the conference narration sort of side, whereas most of the voice actors I spoke to are in video games like Apex Legends or Halo Infinite, mm. that sort of thing. So the industry is very, very broad, right? And it has lots yeah. of different actors and servicing lots of different industries. And with that being said, one of the advocacy organizations I spoke to said that this AI could really knock out more the blue collar voice actor worker who may be working a nine to five job in some other industry and is then trying to record stuff at night in the evening or maybe the early morning to try to get a break into this career. That's just not going to happen if AI can e easily pick up the work for people. And then just lastly, I would just say that when Eleven Labs, when I went to them and asked for a statement, they said that, well, for voice actors, they're no longer limited by the time they can spend in the booth, you know, they can go out mm -hmm. and, well, they can send their voice out and people can replicate it and they can make money that way. I did show that to one voice actor and they were like, the issue is not that we don't have time to go in the booth. We want to go in the booth as much as possible. You know, it's kind of a funda yeah, fundamental true. misunderstanding of how these voice actors actually want to work. They want more work. They don't want to give it away to the AI. 
Yeah, yeah. It, it, not 100% of their time is occupied to where they couldn't, you know, make time to go into the booth. That's obviously their preference. Um, yeah, so this is really interesting to see how this uh, works out. You know, another, I, I have to wrap the interview, but another thing that comes to mind is like, you know, signing over your rights and then say that actor or actress passes away. You know, what? how do those rights extend into uh, beyond them being alive? I'm sure that would be hammered out in the, in the details and in the contract, but you could really see where suddenly, you know, their voice is, is, uh, you know, locked away and, and used in the future, uh, like it has been in the past. So, um, anyways, very interesting stuff. Joseph Cox, really appreciate you coming on and, uh, talking about this. Joseph, of course, writes for vice vice.com. Uh, if people want to follow you online, do you point them to Twitter Mastodon? Where are you hanging out these days? Uh, my Twitter is Joseph F. Cox and my Mastodon, which I set up yesterday or started using yesterday, is just <laughs> Joseph Cox. So you can be one of my 32 followers if you really want. But yeah, there we'll you see go. Get goes. in early. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Get in early. You could say you were there at the beginning. Uh, thank you, Joseph. We'll talk to you soon. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you.